everybody, welcome to the, my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Light, and I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we'll be discussing the Lymatic Mark, which is a very popular way of transmitting a build from a creative world to a survival world without using commands and such, or using a structure block. So to get started, you'll need two things. Some kind of build, like we have right here, and a stick. But before we get started, make sure to go ahead and like, and go ahead and try to share this video, and let's crack right into it. So, the first thing you'll notice is we, we have our area, we have our stick, but um, I'm noticing one problem, we have the wrong selection. So change the selection of the tool you're using, which you are using a stick the whole time. Hold control and use your scroll wheel, and you can select tool type you're using. We're now on area selection. You can also do this on the light medical menu by pressing M and then right here at the bottom. And the next thing that we'll be dealing with is actually creating our schematic. So go into area selection browser, click new selection. This will allow us to create a new selection area, which is the basis for our schematic. So we'll just give it a name and click OK. And then we're going to press escape to get out. And there we go. Now we'll deal with the corners of our schematic. There are multiple ways of selecting corners. And we're going to go, go ahead and go through all of those. You can select the corners of your schematic by left clicking and right clicking. Left clicking and right clicking will change point one and point two respectively, similar to how world edit works. Okay, I mean, that's nice. But if you go into the Lightmatic menu once again and select area editor, and then on this first subregion, which is the one we're working with, click config. Now you can adjust specifically where these coordinates are by using a couple different tools. One, you can click move to flare, and if you notice this blue square moved up in our view, or we you can left click or right click these plus minus buttons on these uh, beside the coordinate you want to change. As a note, you can press control, alt, or shift in any combination and they and that will increase how much is changing but be careful because you can select your entire world by accident if you're not careful. And the final and honestly my favorite way uh, there is one other way that you can edit on the screen, which is to directly enter the coordinates you'd like to select. So make sure to, that we note that, and we'll get right back to the video. Very sorry. Honestly, my favorite way of changing your coordinates is by using what I call the Alt method. So what you do is you hold the Alt key and use your scroll wheel, and it will adjust where that corner is by just how you're scrolling. You have to look in the direction you're wanting to change, of course. Still, not that horrible. So left clicking and right clicking also will change the coordinate you're using. So by left clicking, you select coordinate one, and by right clicking, you select coordinate two. And that's all the basics on how to make a selection area and, how, and get started by make, making your schematic. But we're missing a couple things with this. Like, we're, we've got all this extra space here on either side. We're missing our cool little lamp post. Can we make this a little bit better? We can. So once again, go into your area editor, and we're going to click new subregion. And we're going to go ahead and give it that subregion name. And we now have that subregion selected. So, so with that subregion selected, we can once again left click and right click. And that will allow us to pick that area. We can still do the same selection tools as before. And then we're going to go ahead and change our selection by clicking on the one we want to use it again in this menu. In the area editor menu, we can click the subregion we want to go ahead and edit as well just in case you want to go back and change some and we're going to go ahead and change that coordinate so we're just selecting this section another way to add a subregion is holding the m key and a key at the same time that'll make a new selection right where you're standing and then we can left click where we want to go we can right click where we want to go and we can use the alt key to change specific coordinates we want to we want to adjust there we go so now we've got our full schematic change we've been able to add subregions guess the only thing that's left is to save it right how do we do that go ahead and press m one last time and go into your area editor and we're going to save our schematic here you can add a name you can see all of the schematics you have saved and you can select some different features the major one i usually select is just this ignore entities button which prevents your schematic schematic from saving entities just in case you don't want to deal with that maybe you got a zombie sitting in your zone or something save that and oh we've already got that saved so you do have to have them with a unique name and there you go so you can save a schematic you can set up a schematic you can open a schematic do we know how to do that yet i don't think so so we're going to start by pressing control and scrolling to the schematic placement mode in our with our tool now we're going to go into the load schematics menu as a note the lightmatica doesn't just work with the lightmatica um specific schematic Right here, this bamboo is actually an MBT file that my friend Helix sent. So you can load something from a vanilla world using structure. And now we have a schematic placement. Looks nice. Let's go ahead and uh, put it where we would like it to be. 
Move it over here. And we can, once again, use our Alt key to move it into the exact position we'd like. And there's your schematic. It's nice if it's placed in the world. And that's everything that you need to know to get started with Light Matter. And add some things just to close up this video. Make sure just to go ahead and subscribe because if I get to 200 subscribers by the end of the month, I'm going to try to live stream Fortnite. I've never done a first person shooter, so I think it'll be fun to try. Who knows? Uh, again, and because my friends reminded me and asked this question, uh, those of you who have been following my channel for a while are like, bro, you promised you'd live stream, you're getting your head shaved in the near future. Well, I'm graduating in May. My mom is like, no, you're not shaving your head till I get nice pictures. The problem is my nice pictures are always from my brother because I'm a cheapskate. When is my brother coming? During my graduation. My brother also knows how to live stream and set up a camera. So why not make a very high quality stream of me getting my head shaved, reacting to it, and probably crying myself to sleep for the rest of my life in one fell swoop. Plus, then I don't make the mother mad and play and I live in the house, so it's... It's just one of those things you want to do. So make sure to subscribe for that. It will be happening in May. If my brother doesn't do it, I will hog tie him till he does. Because I'm mean. And also, I'm recording this on Saturday, right before my Hypixel live stream. So I guess go ahead and check out my live streams. I do a bunch of them. Uh, three days usually during the week. We've got Nostalgia Night, we've got Community Nights, and we got the PCP Live Night. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Um, this is a long form series. We'll be doing more videos in the future, and these videos will then con be compiled together so that you guys can, you know, react to them, respond to them. I can update the series as like matter changes. And if I have any issues, let me know so that I can adjust those and adjust them in the series. Without further ado, this is Negative Light signing out, and God bless y'all.